Commissioner Robert P. Goodwin. Here. Commissioner Thomas D. Oliver. Here. Commissioner John A. Raybell. Here. Thank you. Today is March 24th, 2015, and it is 10 o'clock in the afternoon. We are at 922 Illinois Street, which is actually the corporate, the business office for the commission, and uh, I believe there are agendas around the room if you need one. Um, I'd like to announce that this meeting is open to the public and it will be run according to the Nebraska Public Meeting Act. There is on the file cabinet, right over there by the Sheriff Jensen and our ex-Sheriff Carol uh, Johnson, uh, on that file cabinet there if anyone would like to review that. I would like to introduce our commissioners uh, who have we've already met by roll call, and that's Tom Oliver, John Rendell, and myself. I'd also like to introduce Bill Cito, who is our director. Uh, I don't see Stan Below. He's probably out. He was walking around. He's our assistant director or deputy director. Uh, Sandra Lunas, who is our accounting clerk and reporter, and Chuck Borcher, who is our uh, audio technician. Um, I will be the hearing office officer for this morning's session, and uh, Mr. Oliver will be the hearing officer for this afternoon. Ms. Lunas will serve as recorder. Record. I'd like you to understand that all, uh, all of these proceedings before the commission are open to the public and are being recorded. I would like to welcome and acknowledge Senator Carr, who comes here from the 21st uh, legislative district, which is north of Lincoln. And it's my understanding he also has uh, some comments he would like to make and uh, information to provide from Senator John Stinner of the 48th uh, legislative district, Scotts Bluff, here in uh, Scotts Bluff County. Um, I would like to welcome the Nebraska State Patrol, who is here. I don't see them. Their officers are right there. Okay, gentlemen, I'd like to welcome your, you being here also. I understand that you are here to, uh, as the senator witnessed the proceedings, uh, but are more interested, of course, in uh, issues involving highway safety. I'd also like to thank the Cheyenne County Sheriff's Office and Sheriff John Jensen for his being present here today to help us make sure everyone is a lady and gentleman. Thank you. Uh, the exits in this building, we have quite a few people here today, so the exits in this building are directly in front of me, to the south of the building, or to the north of the building, and directly behind me, to the south of the building. Uh, if there's ever a need to use those, you please use those in an orderly fashion. Um, I want you to understand that this is the commission's working office, and this is where they do their work. All of these file cabinets you see behind you and around you are full of drilling logs and other information. And I want to tell you that we, on this commission, provide an excellent service to anyone who should ask for it. If you would like to come out, come into the office, and find out something about a particular well or a particular location, I'm going to tell you we have some of the best staff, in my opinion, in the United States. I think we have one of the best commissions there are in this country. And, and I'm, I'm so proud of how <coughs> this staff uh, sees to people's needs. So uh, if there is something that you would like to discuss with or find out about anything that's going on, it is available and will be shared. Um, I would like to also thank Edna and Diane and Mike, who I haven't separately uh, introduced, for setting up this today. We have, again, quite a group of people that is a little bit unusual for us. Uh, the Nebraska Fire Marshal uh, tells us that apparently we need to have 100 square foot per, per person, so we have room for about 55, 60 people, I believe is how many will be allowed uh, in the building. Uh, necessarily, therefore, we must rotate. And so 
I would ask anyone who makes comments for the commission to please retire after your comment and leave the building so that someone else can come in and speak. The, the commissioners would like to hear as many people as possible, so I would ask you if you please would uh, uh, do that. It would be greatly appreciated. Each person will be given three minutes to speak and give comments to the commission. The commissioners will neither ask questions nor respond to comments. Uh, it's my understanding that Ms. Luna they will give you the sign-in sh sheet that any presenter has prepared, and then when it's your turn to speak, you'll be permitted to do so at one of these two desks. Is that correct, Mr. Right. Thank you. Um, when you speak, please state your name and give your address. That's very important for us, not only to tie it up to your sign-in sheet, but also to know uh, who, uh, whom we are listening to. So I would ask that you do that now. I can assure you without equivocation that the commissioners, uh, you will have the commissioners undivided attention. We are very interested in what everyone has to say. And therefore, I would appreciate it if you would not repeat comments that were made by others. For example, if someone else made identically the same comment as you intended to make, I would ask that you simply say, well, I agree with Mr. Jones, uh, it looks like it's going to rain today. Now, with that comment, you need to understand that we will understand your comment is about the weather, and your opinion is that it's going to rain today. So just with that type of brevity, then we will hear as many different comments as possible, which is what we'd like to do. Um, I would also ask that you show some decorum in your presentation. Please act as ladies and gentlemen. We can assure you we will treat you as ladies and gentlemen. And we just, I just cannot tolerate if someone becomes unruly. And so I would ask everyone, please, to act as a lady and gentleman while making your comments. Finally, uh, if you have a cell phone or some other device that might be noisy or interrupt, please turn that off now uh, so that the speakers can speak without interruption. We will run the public comment portion of this meeting until 1 o'clock p.m. I intend to take a break perhaps at about 11.30, uh, but then we will recess for lunch and we will reconvene at 2.30 p.m. with Mr. Oliver acting as chairman. <coughs> so with that, uh, we will proceed with the public comment portions. Is there anything I've forgotten? Then we will proceed with the public comment portion. I would ask that Whoever's interested in, in, in giving a statement to the commission, please approach Ms. Lunas, provide your sign-in sheet, and we will hear what you have to say. Ms. Lunas also has a three-minute clock, and she will remind, please do, uh, uh, Sandy, at one minute. Thank you. I'd be glad to start. You have my comment sheet, right? You have my sheet that I gave you this morning. Well, they took mine. They told me I was the first one here signed up, and they said, "Well, oh, I need to uh, just come on up and she, we'll." She's bringing mine. Okay. <clears throat> my name is James Osborne. I'm from Ainsworth, Nebraska. <clears throat> my address is 43110, 879th Road. Um, I actually have some. A little bit of experience in the oil and gas field. I've helped build pipelines uh, all over the country. Um, and I'm on the wire about this thing. Uh, my brothers, I have a family that works in the fracking field. Um, both of his boys work in the fracking field. Um, they just laid off 30 people. I know there's jobs and there's things going on all over the, all over the world that's, that's making us do kind of crazy things. But Nebraska's unique because we have a water source. Um, our economy, everything about Nebraska runs on water, period. Um, we can survive, we might have to walk around a little bit, 
but we can survive with this. And that's what we have. Is this just beautiful, clean, pristine drinking water? And I know you guys would each one drink this. So what I brought, and my question is, would you drink this? It's not mixed up real well. There are some goodies down there that are sharing this glass. So you told me this morning when I was in here talking to you that you would drink this water, right? So would you drink it? Yes or no? Sir, we can either comment or Oh you can't you can't answer any questions? No, sir. So my answer would be no. I would not drink this. So, I don't want this in the water that will travel entirely across this state in three days. If we happen to spill something on top of the ground here, or anywhere else, the water on the top of the ground travels at about six miles an hour. It doesn't rest, it doesn't stop, it travels 144 miles a day. 144 miles a day, then take a break. Three days it's clear across the state of Nebraska. And this water from here travels east. We know that. And there is no doubt that there will be contamination. There will be spill. There will be. But the problem is, if you don't know what's in this, and I say this is a trade secret because I mixed this this morning and it has my trade secret chemicals in it, you would want to know what you were drinking before you drank it, I'm sure. And nobody here, once this happens, it's not going to get cleaned up unless you have the formula. And the only ones that would have the formula would be the ones that actually contaminated it. So that's my three minutes, you guys. Thank you. The power of one. Remember, everybody makes a difference. I don't have enough hands to carry this out of here, but I'd like to leave that there if you don't mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm Alan Maybe, and I'm uh, my address is 170549 County Road, Allen, Mitchell, Nebraska. To address some concerns that a lot of people in my industry uh, share, and that is having to do with the number two industry in the state of Nebraska, and it's tourism. Um, the track routes that would be coming uh, with the wastewater would be going to the Scottsdale National Park, and North of Mitchell would be going to the they would uh, be going by the front door of the Mitchell High School on Highway 29, and they would be going by a great school on Highway 26. Uh, the big issue is, of course, safety and, and the quality of the experience of the tourists, too. One of the selling points that we have out here, why people come, is that our environment is pretty pristine. The roads are in good condition. There's very little traffic. <coughs> and that would all end with this T-Rex, this well, disposal well would go into effect. I might make one comment really quick that if you're, you're talking, I've heard the members say 80 trucks. Well, and I heard an industry person say, well, initially it would be less than that. Well, it could be more than that, too. But if these trucks are pulling a pup, that's not a truck. That's a truck in hand. And you, if you talk about 80 trucks, um, coming through, you're not talking any trucks, you're talking 120 trucks, equivalent to that. So, I can't stress enough how, how much this will impact tourism. It will be very negative, and that's, that's one of the major industries of the press. Um, these, the drivers, as I understand, and the trucks will not be licensed by DOT. 
your team would limit them to 10 hours a day plus the plus um, additional inspections <coughs> on the truck. So uh, that is a huge concern. Uh, the road's damage. They're going to tear up these roads. You know it as well as I do. These roads are not here to haul to handle that, that heavy weight, and they're going to destroy our roads. And then who's liable? One other thing real quick is the company should be bonded. They should be bonded to uh, cap the well or plug the well. If an incident happens, <coughs> they should be uh, bonded to uh, have a liability of at least $5 million to uh, repair roads and uh, stand liabilities. When an accident happens, I don't want this company just to be able to walk away. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> encourage the next speakers to come up to this empty mic and be prepared to speak. We'll have you first and I hope you haven't started your time yet. No, I haven't. Hi, my name is Patty Goodschmidt. Thank you for letting us speak today. My husband and I are Sioux County landowners, seven miles south of the well. We are on Highway 29. I have 700 plus signatures in opposition of the dirty fracking wastewater disposal well. These signatures are from Sioux County landowners and residents who are college graduates, business people, ranchers, farmers, and just normal hardworking people who do not want to take a chance with our water, our family way of life, and they have signed this petition. We are not kids by any means, as you, Mr. Seidow, has stated to the press. We have done hours upon hours of research on high injection wastewater wells and the damage that the water does to the land, roads, and we got our information from scientific reports, not fairy tales. My question is, where will the wastewater be cleaned? Where will it be stored? Will it be <coughs> in tanks or will it be in a lagoon? And where are the toxic filters disposed of, which contain heavy metals and toxins? like benzene and tooling. I also would like to say, all of the people that I have talked to in the last two months, I've only had two that were in, uh, in favor of the well. Everybody else does not want it there. They don't want to take a chance with our water, our way of life, our kids' future, our farming, our agriculture, and we hope that you take this all into consideration. And we also need more regulations on saltwater disposal wells or a moratorium. Thank you very much. Thank you.